all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, Give It All Away. My name is Rick Gregson, and well, I'm giving all away. Today's topic is um, generational theory, as presented by Strauss and Howe in their uh, book, The Fourth Turning. Um, the reason I, I'm talking about this, a few weeks ago I did a video and uh, it was in reference to G. Michael Hopp's uh, character that uh, made the quote, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. Um, I had a brief exchange with Mr. Hopf uh, over Twitter a little bit over a month ago. He put me on to Strauss Howe generational theory. My biggest concern is where are we at in the cycle? Um, personally, you know, I need hope for tomorrow. Uh, these days, you know, political discourse rages, innocent children are killed, mass murder in Chicago. I mean, this is ridiculous here on the U.S. soil. War drones on outside the U.S. Economies globally are stalling. Prices of gas are ridiculous. The, the, the environment's on fire, sometimes more literally. <laughs> uh, right now, more figuratively, looking at uh, stuff out of the uh, Supreme Court, as well as Roe versus Wade. <sighs> precedent has no precedence. Anyway, um, it just kind of makes me wonder, is there any hope for our future? So with that said, welcome again, friends. Uh, our topics on this channel are life experience, life hacks, entrepreneurship, and wealth building. Uh, but it can admittedly also be anything else that's caught my eye. Um, and again, today's topic is Strauss Howe Generational Theory. Uh, more specifically, um, the fourth turn. And these topics are near and dear to my heart, and I hope that you find them entertaining, uh, at least. So I'd like to spark some conversation, and uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. That's it. Let's, uh, let's get into it. So Strauss Howe Generational Theory. This was a theory created by William Strauss and Neil Howe, and it was presented in two books uh, that they authored, uh, the first one was Generations in 1991, and the second book was The Fourth Turning, which was uh, produced in 1996. What, what this does, what, gener what generational theory does, is it describes a recurring cycle in American history driven by generational archetypes or personas. Um, and I can tell you the current seculum that we're in, seculum cycle, uh, began in 1943, and um, it should complete around 2030. Um, so here's some descriptions that I can provide. These are also the slides I'll, I'll be switching to during this during this um, video. So the personas. Um, of these different generations um, are, there's four types of personas that, that are uh, prevalent during the generations. So for instance, in 1943 to 1960, it was the prophet or the idealist. Um, in 1961 to 1981, it's more uh, a nomad and uh, labeled as reactive. Um, in 82 to 2004, it's the hero, and they're very civic-minded. And uh, lastly, in 2005 to 2030, these are more the artistic folks, and they're very adaptive. So these people, these personalities, you know, in, in their childhood, so like, let's talk about uh, uh, the boomers, right? In their childhood, indulged. Um, Gen X, underprotected. Uh, millennial protected and the the next generation they're more over protected um, and what this does is this um, plays into their leadership qualities as they hit in midlife so for instance boomers tend to be more focused on morals and principles um, Gen X were more pragmatic leaders 
uh, Gen Z will be and are, um, they're more energetic, uh, uh, sometimes overconfident leaders. Um, and uh, the next generation of 2005 to 2030 folks, as they come into their adulthood, they'll be uh, typically more process-oriented leaders. Um, so that said, um, why is this why is this important? Why am I talking about this? Well, <laughs> my mom always said I was a warrior, and I've tried to come out of it. You know, meditation, stoicism, etc. I used to have faith in human nature, um, but I found people don't usually act in ways that are best for all involved. Um, people tend to be selfish, short-sighted, narrow-minded, and myopic. Um, a win-win outcome is often just a bridge too far for most people to to go to, right? Um, acceptance, empathy, compassion, <laughs> those seem to be pretty out the door these days. Uh, so people can be really difficult, and our ability to influence outcomes uh, as an individual is very limited. So common sense and fair seem to be ideals, um, somewhat open to interpretation, which is totally crappy. Uh, and, you know, I, I, something to sum this all up, I once heard a friend tell someone, better to be the screwer than the screwee. And he was dead serious. And I'm like, wow, is that is that where we're setting our sights? So surely we can be better than this. But when? So has mankind lost its kindness? I think I've said that in a couple of videos. Obviously, it's something that's on my mind. Um, you know, trust the process. I've got trust issues. Um, I've learned not to expect much from others, and I think it's a Gen X thing. Um, so how do we recover? Where are we in this process of seculum, this uh, uh, set of generations? So I believe many things in life are cyclical if you lay them out on a long enough timeline. Um, since the dawn of man, human nature are good desires and entropy, um, which is the tendency of systems to decay and fall into disarray, have all been factors in play. Um, and I think right now we're seeing kind of the effects of entropy over our generations. Um, so I still believe there's hope for all of us, but the pragmatic in me wants to have a realistic expectation of when will things get better. You know, I've spoke with some friends of mine uh, here in Austin, and, you know, um, one thing I've heard is, well, faith in a better world or an afterworld. Um, that's great. That's, that's fine. That's perfect. That's lovely. But I'm looking for something more tactical. I'm looking for something more immediate. Um, not necessarily for my lifetime, right? I'm not looking for the pain relief. But what I am looking for is the knowledge and the solace that comes with it'll be better for our future generations, right? We're not going to hand them a steaming bowl of crap. So, that being said, right now I'm looking at a chart of Anglo-American history, which is, uh, it, the chart was generated with data from, uh, I'm sorry, from 1483 to 2030. Now, this chart was generated on an Ubuntu platform uh, and uh, um, some sort of charting software. Uh, and I believe it was developed by Ikram Haramani. And the copyright date on it is, uh, looks like it was updated on 2018. I've modified the chart slightly uh, for this conversation. And, um, you know, as you can see, it shows start of eras, uh, end of an era, which is the second one, it's the full cycle. And first turn is a high, second turn is an awakening, third turn is an unraveling, and fourth turn is a crisis. Presently, we're in that fourth turn. And per the chart, we're about two-thirds, uh, roughly, through that fourth turn. It began in 2005, and it should end around 2030. Each of those turns is about 20 to 25 years. 
roughly. And that uh, that accounts for a generation. So that's why it ideally takes four generations to get through a turn. Um, so that said, um, again, it's kind of comforting to understand that there's a cycle to this, and we're not far from the end. So we don't have to think, oh my god, this is life in perpetuity. No, this is just a season. It will pass. Things will get better. Not saying that drama doesn't always exist. Not saying that, that chaos isn't always out there. But, yeah, we're living in an extreme level of it right now. So, And, you know, we're still roughly 10 years from the end. So it'll get worse before it gets better. But at least we can know that there's an end in sight. That helps me tremendously. All right, so the fourth turn, specifically, that, again, that was kind of the title of uh, one of the books that these two gentlemen authored. Um, so my biggest concerns coming into this video was where are we at in the seculum, uh, which that's been answered. We're in the time of crisis in the fourth turn. Yay. Um, what should we be doing? Well, uh, and, and I've also been a little concerned about how did we get here, but uh, water under the bridge, you can only worry about so many things, right? So, um, what should we be doing? Who should do what? And I've always wondered, you know, uh, <laughs> teach the kids well and let them lead the way. I think I'm quoting uh, somebody's song. Anyway, uh, is it time for the millennials to take leadership? And I, I was thinking, well, maybe they seem to be a generation of loving folk and, and teamwork and all this stuff, and maybe maybe it is time. Mm, reading through what Strauss and Howe have to say right now kind of slows me on that a little bit. Um, it's easy to see the world's a mess, right? Uh, but they did give some advice here. They actually gave scripts for the different generations that should have been alive uh, during this fourth turn, during this period of crisis. So let's take a look. Who would have still been around, likely? Um, so likely, uh, again, realizing that this fourth turn started in 2005 and should be ending in 2030, we likely have some of the GI generation still around, um, some of the silent generation still around. Uh, boomers, definitely. Gen X or 13ers, definitely. Millennials, absolutely. And we also have the new upcoming generation, right? These are just the kids right now. The homeland generation. So, that being said, let's take a look at the scripts. So, the script for the GI generation, folks. Um, GI generation would have been born between 1901 and 1924. Um, they were the people that were... Um, coming in as leaders and such uh, during the, um, the last high, right? And they've possessed the civic virtue that's, that's needed now, um, that's going to be needed then uh, as well. Um, they've got a reputation for selflessness, and it turned dormant after the awakening. There was some pushback against that generation, so, you know, they need to revert to their Depression-era civic values and community-first attitudes. They also need to be able to speak with authority to the millennial generation today about our societal decay and um, civic behavior and how that's influencing um, and what needs to be looked at and possibly have some action against it. Um, the next script was for the silent generation, which was born in 1925 to 1942. Um, they have a tendency to entangle folks, so they just need to be careful about doing that and avoid antagonizing and adding undue complexity and red tape. Um, it's also advised that they adopt more of a, a Gen X point of view, um, realizing Experts can be wrong. Kind intentions don't always produce the kind of results you're looking for. 
Um, and elites can stumble over simple decisions. Uh, essentially, Gen X survivalism trumps procedural democracy every time. Um, also, a role that they can, a function that they can do is deflect boomer anger and challenge my generation's apathy. Yeah, we've got that in spades sometimes. Um, gracefully letting loose some of their public reward, right? Um, so that is that is a script in a nutshell for the silent generation. The next is the script for the boomers, uh, which these are the folks that were born from 1943 to 1960. And that is help harness the civic duty and the skill of the old hero, the GI generation, and the child hero, which is the millennial generation. Um, it's, it's difficult for boomers, though, because they don't really honor the GI generation, don't really understand the millennial generation. So it, it, it's going to be a stretch for them, but th they can do it if they want. Uh, that they, can, they should do it. <laughs> uh, the boomer generation is leading uh, senior leadership at a time of maximum danger, but also great opportunity. Um, they need to show some level of self-restraint, otherwise they're going to bankrupt the, the downstream generations, literally, and they're going to morally bankrupt themselves. Um, they need to get to a point where they can defuse culture wars quickly. Their generational moralism is and has created a threat. Um, and I, I think you see this with the older politicians. I, I think there's no doubt that this is um, a lot of what's going on. Uh, so we have a script for 13ers, which is Gen X. And uh, we're the folks that were born 1961 to 1981. So we were latchkey kids, right? We were the underprotected children. So essentially, we possessed survival skills in spades. We were hardened by our childhood, and, you know, <laughs> we had a very individualistic youth. I, I listened back to the, the music from that time, right, when I was growing up in, in the late 80s. Uh, as I'd gotten out of high school and everything. And, uh, yeah, that's good stuff, actually. Uh, so here's the deal. It's kind of going to fall to us to fix the problems right now and clean up the messes. So just embrace it. It's, it's our role, right? We've got something I, I, I realize. We've got the toolkit. We're the ones that were equipped for this. And this is what we're here to do. So whether you want to or not, man up. <laughs> and I'm not saying that in a sexist way. That goes for the women too. But um, let's, uh, let's pull it together because this is on our shoulders heavy to make things happen the way they need to happen. All of our tools are going to be tested to keep boomers from wreaking havoc and to prevent men millennials from mindlessly following the elders. Um, we need to vote more, we need to participate more, and we just need to buckle up and do the necessary hard jobs. Lastly, script for the millennial generation, which is 1982 to 2004. Um, the crisis will be a great coming of age trial. Um, this area will test your ability for teamwork, cooperation, uh, competence, and courage. Um, so stay upbeat and reject the unraveling era cynicism, which was really more predominant with my gen, I believe. Um, regarding traditional values, ignore the present hypocrisy and heed the lessons. Exemplify them and bring them forward. Right, that will be really important um, in issuing in the uh, the high, the, the the next era as we start a new circle around. So, 
In closing, the questions we've attempted to answer. Where are we at in the cycle or process? Well, we're over halfway through the fourth turn. <laughs> so hold on to your seats, hold on to your assets, and hold on to your loved ones. Um, is there any hope for our future? How do we recover? Well, my magic eight ball says yes. We've been through these cycles before for a very long time. Uh, in this case, we even have scripts that were crafted for us for each of the generations. Um, do your part. Uh, so next question. Surely we can be better than this. But when? Well, according to Strauss and Howe, around 2030. Hate to wait. Do your part. <laughs> um, trust the process. <laughs> I'm Gen X. Of course not. Do your part. <laughs> Get involved as appropriate, but know when it's time to let go. Follow the seasons. So with this, let's uh, wrap the video and <clears throat> final call to action. Um, first of all, I'd like to know, did the video provide you with any insight into our present era or state? And was there any actionable, actionable advice that you found in this? Um, is this theory um, bona fide or is it just rubbish? You know, in, in academic circles, there, there's always infighting. Uh, so I'd love to hear what you think about that as well. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Um, also, feel welcome to share the video. If you enjoyed it, uh, share it out and let's make more people aware of just what they need to be doing. Um, I think that helps so much to have some idea where Directional North actually lies. So thank you so much for joining, and uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks so much.